Hello, greetings English 1 students. This is the video lesson for irony. This is a big literary concept and we're going to kind of break into uh, just one major aspect of it today and talk about some examples of that. So before uh, we get into the main one we're going to be talking about, let me go over the other types because there's three in all, three in general, and they all basically work the same way, but uh, they're very different in how they are uh, used and seen in, in literature, stories, everyday life, whatever. So the first one uh, in this types of irony is verbal irony. And verbal irony uh, is a speaker's intention, excuse me, is when a speaker's intention is the opposite of what he or she is saying. So you think about it, irony is like a twist on something. Most of you have not any idea already of what irony is. You know, there's some kind of twist to it. And uh, so verbal irony is when the speaker's intention is the opposite of what he or she is saying. And so, for example, a character stepping out into a hurricane and saying, what nice weather we are having. So, obviously that's not what they mean. Uh, it's totally verbal irony because it's not, hurricanes are not nice weather. Okay, so that's verbal irony. And uh, so then we have dramatic irony. Dramatic irony is called dramatic irony because it kind of originates in drama and plays. Uh, when the audience knows a key piece of information that a character in a play, movie, or novel does not. So this is any time where you know something the character does not. Um, the most easy example, classic example of this is horror movies where you know she shouldn't go down the steps or downstairs because there's some kind of monster down there, right? But she goes down anyway because she's in a horror movie. And so that's dramatic irony. We knew that monster was down there. She didn't, okay? Somewhere along the way, the director of the movie or whoever um, showed us that monster being down there and we knew it. And so that's the dramatic irony. For another example would be in Shakespeare's tragedy, Othello. Uh, Iago, whom Othello considers a friend, has been plotting Othello's demise for the duration of the play. And the way we know that, Shakespeare tells us that in Othello, and we're not reading that this year, you might read it your senior year. But anyway, uh, the way Shakespeare tells us that Iago uh, is plotting Othello's demise is because he gives us these speeches throughout by him, when he's by himself, like Iago kind of turns to the audience and gives these speeches about how much he hates Othello and is plotting against him and all that stuff. So... Um, so Othello does not know that Iago is the one causing all of his problems, but the audience does. So like he, um, he gets, um, oops. Uh, so like, uh, Othello gets accused of adultery and, or his wife does, excuse me. And the whole time it was like Iago setting it up and everything. So we know what's really going on. Othello doesn't. And, uh, it's kind of part of why it's a tragedy. And, uh, yeah, that's dramatic irony. Okay. Now the biggest one we're getting into here is situational irony. And so situational irony is when the actual result of a situation is totally different from what you'd expect the result to be. So when the actual result of a situation is totally different from what you'd expect the result to be. So there's that idea of the twist, you know, something turning around. And so um, in in this case, it's the situation. So in, in your short story that we're going to read with this, or that we're going to look at this in short stories, you're going to see something in the plot has twisted around. Uh, the author has um, kind of le maybe left a couple breadcrumbs along the way uh, to, to lead this to this twist that is very plausible in the story, but it's still very ironic because it's not what we expected at all. So, for example, this uh, one here, a family spends a lot of time and money planning an elaborate surprise birthday party for their mother to show her how much they care. But it turns out her birthday is next month and none of them knew the correct date. She ends up fuming that no one cares enough to remember her birthday. So, um, there it is, okay? Um, you saw where the, the family is uh, planning this surprise birthday party. You can see that. But they didn't have the right date, so we might have thought, you know, maybe that, you know, relating to the conflict of the story, because uh, that's kind of what this unit's about. You know, we might have thought the conflict was, uh, will they be able to pull off this wonderful, su wonderful surprise? Will the mom find out? You know, can they uh, make her feel special? Or really, that twist at the end left us with a different message of, uh, you know, it wasn't a message of, oh, look how much they love their mom, and um, you know, she should have trusted her family, or whatever. The message was. The family wasn't paying, did not pay attention to details. They had the wrong month. So, 
Um, and, and, and just as a side note, this has actually happened in my life. Um, not, it wasn't me playing my mother's birthday, but it was my grandmother, my mom's mom <laughs> when I was a kid and, uh, she just got her dates mixed up and it wasn't a whole month off. It was like one day off, but still it was, it was kind of, a, it was really embarrassing because I saw the whole thing go down in, um, uh, um, like I think my grandmother, yeah, I remember my grandma was about to go to, go to bed and, uh, she said something about, well, I guess, uh, maybe we'll celebrate my birthday tomorrow. And my mom was like, yeah, cause it is tomorrow. She's like, no, it's today. <laughs> so she felt very embarrassed and we whipped out the cake real quick and had it before we went to bed and all that and, and still celebrated her. But yeah, it was, uh, it was very, uh, awkward, embarrassing time for my mom and uh, we laugh about it now, but, um. You know, my my, grand, my grandmother was very very understanding, very forgiving woman. So, uh, no hard feelings were kept. But yeah, there it is. Okay, moving on. So let's look at some examples of irony, and this isn't one, but I thought it was funny anyway. If you've ever seen Star Wars, um, this is kind of an example of one of them. Uh, this is from Return of the Jedi. And if you haven't seen Star Wars, you know something about the Death Star, and it was like this big thing. They were you know the big cannon out there using to destroy worlds and stuff. And uh, so the irony there is that this big old spaceship, uh, which they call a Star Destroyer, uh, was defending the Death Star and it ends up crashing into it instead. So instead of, uh, yeah, helping it, it kind of hurt it in a way, even more so. So anyway, <clears throat> another example, uh, you know, a fitness center with some escalators in and out, which I'm not entirely sure this isn't like Photoshop somehow, but it looks real enough. So let's go with it. And it's pretty funny though, yeah. Now this video is going to explain uh, situational irony more in depth or a little bit differently, and so hopefully it'll help you understand it. Please watch. Picture this. Your friend and you are watching a sitcom, and the sassy sidekick walks into a room carrying a four-tiered wedding cake. He trips, falls, and face plants into the cake. Your friend doubles over with laughter and says, So ridiculous! So ironic! Well, quick, what do you do? Do you laugh along with the laugh track and let this grievous misinterpretation of irony go? Or do you throw caution to the wind and explain the true meaning of irony? If you're me, you choose the latter. Unfortunately, irony has been completely misunderstood. We tend to throw out that term whenever we see something funny or coincidental. And while many examples of true irony can be funny, that is not the driving factor of being ironic. A situation is only ironic if what happens is the exact opposite of what was expected. If you expect A, but get B, then you have irony. Let's take the slapstick cake situation as an example. When someone walks in, precariously balancing something that shouldn't be carried alone, trips, falls, and makes a mess? It is funny, but it's not ironic. In fact, you probably expect someone who is single-handedly carrying a huge cake to trip. When he does, reality aligns with expectations, and so that is not irony. But what if the sassy sidekick walked in wearing a gold medal that he'd won at the cakewalking event at the Atlanta Olympics in 1996? But what if that sidekick was a professional cake carrier? Then, maybe there would have been a reasonable expectation that he would have been more skilled when carrying a ridiculously large cake. Then, when that reasonable expectation was not met by the tripping sidekick, irony would have been exemplified. Another example, a senior citizen texting and blogging. The common and reasonable expectation of more m mature men and women is that they don't like or know technology, that they have a hard time turning on a computer, or that they have the old brick cell phones from the 1980s. One should not expect them to be connected, high tech, or savvy enough to text or to be blogging, which must seem like some sort of newfangled thing that back in my day, they never had. So when granny pulls out her smartphone to post pictures of her dentures or her grandkids, irony ensues. Reasonable expectations of the situation are not met. That is irony. So while the cake dropper might not be ironic, there are all kinds of situations in life that are. Go out and find those true examples of irony.
So, as you saw in the video, um, not everything we think is ironic is necessarily ironic. And so we kind of get in, have to clarify things a little bit here. Uh, maybe talk about situational irony versus coincidence. Sometimes things happen and it's just a coincidence. So, you know, coincidence is when two or more events happen of striking similarity at one particular time by accident or chance. So that just that's what it means by coincidence. It just kind of was by chance it happened there. And an example might be two female celebrities wearing the same gown to the, Amer the Academy Awards function. So they both showed up in the same gown. Uh, they didn't plan that, um, but it wasn't ironic because there was nothing, you know, just kind of set up our expectations of what they would wear. And so uh, that's, you know, the, that's where we get the whole who wore it better kind of a thing and whatnot. Uh, or two classmates who were not in touch with each other. Meeting each other at an airport after 10 years of time has gone by. So you just happen to run into somebody you haven't seen in a long time. That's just a coincidence. And it's a, it's a good one, but um, it's not ironic because there was nothing that kind of led you to expect one thing and then something else happened. So, for example, these two signs, okay? Childhood, obes childhood obesity, don't take it lightly. My kind of shopping spree, McDonald's, which can lead, if you eat too much of it, can lead to obesity, right? Uh, so, yeah, that's not an ironic situation, even though when I found this, it was put up as one. Uh, that's just coincidence. You know, it's just, uh, <laughs> you know, they both bought those billboards, in, uh, billboard space individually and just happened to be there. So we get to just laugh at it. But it's not ironic, it's just a coincidence. So look, let's look at some examples in literature. Let me read my taskbar for a second there. Uh, first one is Give to the Magi by O. Henry. And I picked this one first because you guys probably read this in middle school. Most likely you did. Uh, maybe you don't remember it because of the name, but uh, by the name, but I'm going to explain it to you, you might. So in Give to the Magi, you have uh, a, a husband and wife who dearly love each other. They're kind of young and in love. Uh, but they don't really, you don't have a whole lot of money. And so, um, you know, husband hasn't really worked his way up in the company yet. And uh, wife doesn't have a job. So they don't have a whole lot of money. But they love each other and they want to get each other really nice Christmas presents. So they decide, uh, they kind of decide on their own uh, to take matters in their own hands to do that. So, uh, so the wife, um, she has this beautiful long hair. And so she decides she's going to sell her hair for wigs. You know, sell to, so sell it. To someone and because uh, she wants to buy her husband um, a really nice chain for his pocket watch and so he's got this nice pocket watch and um, already and so she wants to buy the chain so he can use it and uh, you know kind of have, have that nice thing in his life and stuff have a really nice special present and so um, so she sells her hair and um, buys the chain with the money she got so the ironic twist happens on Christmas Day it is Christmas morning and they're opening each other's presents and um, he opens hers and she opens his kind of at the same time and find that, to find that um, you know he bought her a comb for her beautiful hair so that's the ironic twist and that uh, you know she bought him the chain for his watch well it turns out to buy that comb he sold his watch so they each sold what was most dear to them in order to get something very special for the other. So that's the ironic twist. And so it's a beautiful love story. You know, they're both happily poor with each other, you know, that kind of thing. But um, but it's still ironic, you know, because um, they both made a sacrifice uh, to get the other something special, even though they had no idea what they were doing. So there it is. Next example is Interlopers by Saki. And uh, you can actually find a version of this on YouTube where it takes place in America even though the original takes place I think in Russia yeah in Russia and um, <clears throat> this version uh, takes place in America actually is like kind of like a Hatfield and McCoy kind of thing which is a real a real story of two neighbors who owned a lot of land and hated each other so uh, so that's kind of the story story's premise is that the, you have these two neighbors uh, who own a lot of land and hate each other uh, and they're always claiming like you know part of their land is each other's or whatever uh, you know, one owns the other, owns the other part and stuff like that. So, um, so one night they're out, you know, roaming about with their men that they, that they hire to kind of help protect their land and, uh, they're roaming about and they come across each other and, um, 
as it happens, as they see each other, this is like the two guys who went on the slam. They both uh, fall victim to a tree, a massive tree limb falling and pinning them to the ground. So uh, this tree limb has pinned them to the ground, and uh, they both start out giving these threats and all this stuff about, um, you know, what the what's going to happen when the others man, you know, the others men come and find them and stuff like that. Like going to be a big trouble, and they're going to put an end to all this and stuff like that. Yada yada. And uh, eventually they kind of like settle down and uh, they can become friends. So, as a reader, we're thinking, oh, well, this is nice. This is going to have a nice ending to it. They're going to become friends in the end, and they're going to do something great together, whatever. Uh, but the ironic thing happens where, uh, at the very end, you hear the growling of wolves. <laughs> and so, the ironic twist there is that, you know, we, you know all this time they were in the woods, uh, the real, you know, kind of owners or roamers of the woods uh, were, were smelling them and, and, and coming out to, you know, eventually eat them. So, um, that's the ironic twist there. So, uh, with both of those stories, though, you can kind of see, you know, yes, that's very, uh, plausible to happen, that ending. You know, it's very ironic. We didn't expect it. It's, it's a, it's a great twist, but it's also very plausible. And that's what makes, uh, situational irony good and, um, and how authors will use that. So, for, you know, a, a, a bad example would have been like, at the end, um, out of nowhere, aliens uh, come and abduct the two guys who were pinned down by the tree. I mean, we'd have never seen that coming. That would have been like completely crazy. Now, would it have still been good storytelling? Maybe, you know, depending on how they did it. Um, but it wouldn't have really been irony. Okay, that's the point. So it wouldn't have been stupid by any means if, if the author did it right and, you know, did something else with that. Um, with, you know, the aliens taking these guys or whatever. Um, but it also would, it wouldn't have been irony. So it's ironic, it's situational ironic when we have that kind of twist where it's plausible, like, oh yeah, I didn't see that coming, but yeah, it makes sense. You know, kind of have that reaction to it. And so that's how irony works. So uh, if you need to review this at all, uh, please go back and look at wherever you need to, or look at the video uh, from the uh, TED Ed, and uh, you can look at that again and whatever you have to do. So um, other than that, Enjoy and have fun. Bye-bye.